Hi all, Violet here, second generation homeschooling mom of three. I have a seven year old, a five year old, and an infant. Today I wanted to share with you how I meal plan for the week. So let's get into it. So this video is part of a collaboration, the Homeschool Show and Tell collaboration hosted by Abby at Rooted and Rest and Jessica at the Waldock Way. This month's theme is Homeschool Lunch Lady. For me, I plan all of our meals and lunches and breakfasts and everything all at the same time before I go grocery shopping. So I thought I'd just take you along while I plan our meal for, meals for this week. So Saturday, I grocery shop on Saturday, and so I start and end there just so I have an extra meal just in case something happens, can't get to the grocery store or I get sick or something. Um, we usually do breakfast for dinner on Saturday. Sunday, we are actually going to eat with friends this week. And then the rest of our meals are set up. Uh, we do one meat meal, one vegetarian meal, and then one vegan meal. I'm actually vegetarian, so I have to make myself something else when I make my family the meat meal. So this week we're gonna have beef stew, I'm going to have veggie frittata, and then we'll have leftovers on Tuesday. Wednesday we'll have, let me get my list of all the, I have a list of the meat meals we like, the veggie meals we like, and then the vegan meals we like. Uh, my kids are asking for pizza, so we'll do pizza, and then we'll do leftovers. Sometimes we can get two nights out of pizza, sometimes not. If I don't have leftovers on Thursday, I'll pull a meal out of the freezer. Um, and then Friday, we'll do black beans and rice. And then Saturday, hopefully we'll have leftovers. If not, we'll do breakfast for dinner again. It really just depends. So I don't write this every day, but every day we have with dinner some sort of like hot veggie, like steamed broccoli or pan fried green beans or something like that. And then we also have salad. So I'll write the ingredients for that when I get to the other side of my grocery shopping list. And then for lunches, my husband makes his own lunches. And so he this week is going to make turkey mushroom rice for himself. And then he's also going to make himself chickpea mixed veggie rice. All right, so that takes care of him. He also, he pretty much always takes something with rice in it to work. Um, so he'll also make like salmon mixed veggie rice or he'll make, um, sometimes he'll make arroz con pollo if we have leftover shredded chicken. He doesn't like cooking and shredding the chicken himself. It takes too long on a weeknight, um, but that's usually takes something rice based. So then for the kids, I know some people pack their lunches like the night before. I hate doing that. Um, but on Monday we have co-op. So I need um, a co-op lunch. And then for the rest of the week, I just write essentially a menu. My kids can pick from that menu what they want to eat each day. So I just make sure I have all the ingredients. And then depending upon what they're feeling like, I'll make something and they're all quick things. So sandwiches, quesadillas are another one that we do a lot muffin tin lunch this is uh, something we got from my son's he does food therapy at ot um, i'll put a picture of it but essentially you fill a muffin tin each row is a different kind of food so you have your proteins grains fruits and veggies and in each tin you put a different food and the idea is that you put two foods your kids like and then one food they either don't like or un are unfamiliar with so it's not touching any of the other foods but it's getting them used to being around it um, so i'll do that for them one day and then we also can do pasta. And then if we have leftovers, we can also do leftovers. But that's pretty much what I buy. Co-op lunch, I do bento boxes for my kids. I'll put a picture of that. And so I just fill each thing, sandwiches a lot of the time, but I'll fill each compartment with fruits, veggies, carb, protein. Like I make sure all the food groups are in there and then some sort of treat. Um, but that just it depends on kind of what I have in the fridge. And then for myself, I'll probably do fried rice this week. So that's all I really do to plan for lunches. For breakfast, I either do baked oatmeal or oatmeal in the crock pot, or then sometimes we'll do cereal and yogurt instead. But I'll just have to make sure that I have all of the ingredients for that, which I usually do. I have a shopping list on my fridge that people are supposed to write things on when we run out of them. So this is my five-year-old. He's written all of these things that he has used up, and then my husband used up a few things too. So then on the back of my list, I just separate my categories based on kind of how the grocery store is laid out. And then I'll fill in all the things I need. I hope you found that helpful. I am now going to show you some of my favorite cookbooks because I can't have a video without showing you some books that I like. So this is one of my favorite vegetarian cookbooks, the Musa Cookbook by Molly Katzen. It just has a lot of really good recipes, different salads and casseroles and various veggie things, refried beans all that so I really really like this one and then she um she writes her own cookbooks now but there is she used to be part of this Moosewood restaurants in Ithaca New York and so they still publish cookbooks I happen to really like this one it has a lot of like soups and just various 
I th mostly use the soup recipes in here and some of the dessert recipes. But yeah, the Musso cookbooks are all really good vegetarian cookbooks. Some of them have fish recipes too, so I guess they're technically pescatarian, but they're all good. And my very favorite baking cookbook. <laughs> I got this to bake with my daughter before she could read because every single recipe has a picture somewhere. Either it has in process pictures um, or it'll have... These cookies have a lot of the pictures at the beginning, but they'll have uh, finished pictures as well. And so before she could read, she could flip through this and go, oh, I want to make this with you. Oh, I want to make that with you. And the recipes here, Rose Levy Berenbaum is, I don't know if she has a degree in chemistry or just a really strong chemistry background, but on her blog, she talks all about how the different chemical reactions in baked goods will change the result of your baked goods. She has a lot of really interesting comparisons on her blog about that. And so this Baking Basics book is just really basic recipes. It has <laughs> all the basic things that you would want to make. Um, and the sizes are fairly small too, which like if I'm baking all the time with my daughter, I don't want to be making two dozen cupcakes every time I make a cupcake. So the recipe in here, the recipes in here for just like plain vanilla cupcakes makes eight cupcakes and you can increase it to make more if you want. The other thing that I really like about this book is it's very well laid out. Like it's very easy to follow. And she has the chart for the uh, different ingredients with the weight and then also the normal measurement and then in the sidebar here she has different baking tips and different variations you can do and then of course the step-by-step -step photos so this is a great one for any kind of baking but especially baking with my kids I wanted them to learn how to do like real baking techniques I didn't really want like a kitty cookbook so this one's really really good we've really enjoyed this one so I hope you found that helpful I will link the um I'll post a link to the playlist in the description box below, and I'll also post links to all the recipes and books and things that I mentioned, and then a few, few recipes I didn't mention but that I really, really like. So I hope you found this helpful. I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you click on an Amazon link and make a purchase, I do receive a small commission. Thank you for watching.